Now let's talk for a few minutes about Ritalin Gone Wrong. This was a an editorial in the New York Times, and I think it was it was the end of January 2012. Uh, Dr. Uh, Sroof, I think it is, he is a professor emeritus at a university, I believe it's Minnesota, I'm just forgetting the exact thing. He wrote this article uh, in the New York Times, and it was a very scathing review of ADHD medication. Well, the title even says it, right? Let's go through some of the arguments. Some of the criticisms in this article included that in 30 years, there's been a 20-fold increase in the use of ADHD medication. He says ADHD medications work in the short term, but not the long term. He challenges the fact that there are brain differences in individuals with ADHD. He talked about the multimodal treatment eight-year follow-up study and criticized uh, ADHD medication treatment based on that longer-term follow-up study. And then he said poverty and social issues seem to contribute, but they don't get recognized and people don't get help for that. So let's talk about these. Also, a couple of quotes. The large-scale medication of children feeds into a societal view that all of life's problems can be solved with a pill and gives millions, millions of children the impression that there is something inherently defective in them. He also said, drugs get everyone, politicians, scientists, teachers, and parents off the hook. Everyone except the child, that is, or the children. He also then says, quote, if drugs, which studies show work for four to eight weeks, are not the answer, what is? Many of these children have anxiety or depression. Many are showing family stresses. We need to treat them as individuals. Now, I'm quoting this here just because this is what's going into a major media outlet. Millions of people read this, and it's considered to be fact because it came from the New York Times. And there are so many problems with these statements. I wanted to bring them forward for you. Hopefully, I'm not making your blood pressure rise as you read these. But let's go through some of the answers. 20-fold increase in, in ADHD medication. You know what? There's much better recognition of ADHD. There's much better treatment of ADHD. Is there overprescription? We talked about this earlier on. There may be some overprescription, but you need to get educated. Make sure you have the right diagnosis and you're getting great care. If you're concerned about it, learn more, seek a second opinion, and go from there. But I think, you know, when there was a 20-fold increase in diabetes medication, people weren't saying this is a problem. They're saying, well, it's a concern. There's so much diabetes, but you know, maybe we need to do lifestyle things and that, but people need the treatment and we're recognizing it and we're helping and we're preventing other problems because we're treating their diabetes. Short term versus long term. Now there are ADHD medication studies which go long term. There are relatively few of them, but there are some. Okay, so there probably should be more of them uh, than there are, but they do show improvement. Recently, there was a 10 year follow up. Um, treatment with medication versus no medication, which was shown to lower rates of comorbid com, uh, conditions. So in the Journal of Pediatrics in 2009, Dr. Biederman from the Harvard group, he published, do stimulants protect against psychiatric disorders in youth with ADHD, a 10 year follow-up study. So they compared a group of kids with ADHD who didn't take medication and kids with ADHD who did, and they followed them up after 10 years. And those who took medicine were less likely to have developed depression anxiety, substance use, etc. ADHD medication protected them from these other problems that kids with ADHD who did not take medication developed. It's helpful in the long run. The multimodal treatment study was probably the best designed study looking at medication versus behavioral treatment versus a combination. For 14 months, almost 600 children were in a research protocol where they got one or the other treatment, you know, medication only, behavioral treatment only, or combination treatment. After the 14 months, the researchers said, thank you, we'd love to still be able to monitor your progress. So do whatever you want to treat your ADHD. Take medicine, don't take medicine, get behavioral therapy, don't get behavioral therapy, whatever you'd like. And we're going to monitor you every year or two, and then we're going to publish data. So the individuals at the eight-year follow-up, they had 14 months of specific treatment, and then seven years of doing whatever the heck they wanted to. Now, let's just think about it for a second. Let's say adults with high blood pressure, mild high blood pressure. If they were given the opportunity to either use, you know, exercise and diet versus medication. And at the end of a year, they were allowed to do whatever they wanted to do. You know, they could either continue medicine or do exercise or not do exercise or whatever they wanted. And then seven years later, you measured their blood pressure to see 
The group that started on medicine, are they better now than the other groups, or are they not better now? Well, what would you think? You'd say, seven years have passed. They're no longer in that group anymore. Things are different now. We should be looking at what they've been doing in the past seven years to decide if their chronic condition has changed or not changed. And that's the main problem with this kind of conclusion from the eight-year follow-up study. They had a controlled treatment seven years ago, and then they've been allowed to do whatever they want to do. And then to say the group that took medication versus the group that took behavioral treatment, they're equal, there's no difference. Well, sure, there's no difference. They've been doing different things for the past seven years. Uh, nobody thought that if they took 14 months of medication, they'd be cured for life. And, and that's what this research is suggesting. They're not cured for life after 14 months of medication, so medications must not work. There's so many logical problems with this, it's terrible. Brain differences. We're, we're very early in this research, but it is very relevant. Um, you know, the technology is getting better and there are more and more brain scans, etc. So Dr. Castellanos published this study in the uh, Journal of the American Medical Association in 2002. It looked at developmental trajectories of brain volume abnormalities in children and teens with ADHD. What he did is compared normal growth of the brain in individual kids without ADHD over 10 years, compared it to kids with ADHD who did not take medication and compared that to kids with ADHD who did take medication. What they found was the medication did not worsen uh, the brain at all. There was no effect on it over 10 years and ADHD individuals had minor brain differences and there's more and more research being done. This is a real issue. The fact that the technology is getting better and better will help us to understand more in the coming years, but we don't have the final answers yet, but it is a brain based condition. Social issues contribute and get ignored. Well, you know, what I can say is working in a clinic, I do my best to address the psychosocial issues. It's harder to address. If politicians helped with poverty, helped with social supports in communities that need them, schools that have, don't have enough funding, it would probably help some of the kids in those areas with ADHD. And I advocate for them, as do many organizations. We do our best to get behavioral treatments in place, though there's often issues with funding. I don't think they're ignored, and I don't think we do one size fits all treatment with prescription medicines. We assess and do our best and help to the extent of our abilities and that the system allows. The final quotes, we're trying to solve it with a pill and everybody's left off the hook and we should treat people as individuals. If you're working with a good doctor and a good healthcare professional and a good treatment team, they're not trying to solve with a pill. They're trying to use medicine in combination with behavioral treatments. People are not let off the hook just because they give their kid a pill. In fact, they need to work on parenting strategies, etc. And we absolutely try to treat people as individuals. One of the factors that's really missing in treatment research, particularly longer term treatment research, is looking beyond the core symptoms of ADHD. We need to look for impairment. How is ADHD impacting people in specific areas, socially, emotionally, psychologically? And we need to look at quality of life, which is much bigger than core symptoms. It's looking at people's self-esteem, how they rate, how they're doing in their life, how they're doing with respect to their own goals, the goals that are relevant to them personally, to their faith, to their community, etc. And we need to broaden it. And that research is starting. And when people say these medicines don't make a difference in time, you know, over time, they're ignoring some of these more subtle things that really have a big impact. Now, I can't say 10 years of treatment improves quality of life, but I can certainly say many months of treatment improves quality of life significantly because that's been done and more research is being done over time. So I've gone a little longer than I hoped, but we still do have time for Q&A. Kathy, I'd be happy to answer any questions.